how to fix the iPad mini home screen is that you take all your apps and you put them into folders in the dock and then you put only widgets on the home screen and it makes it much less malunky and blah with only widgets on there. And it works in vertical and horizontal orientation well. I have my Things 3 widget, which is the biggest widget on there. I have my standard Apple Calendar app right there and then the Apple Siri suggestion apps, which I find are pretty helpful. But then the weather, because you never know what the weather is. And when I'm going on bicycle rides, it's important and things like that. And especially if you go, when we go back to school as students and then all my shortcuts that I run often on the homepage and then how amazing drafts is and the automations that it can use, like new app with dictation. So I can tap that in, bring me into a new, when a new file and start dictating, then plus is just new and then inbox is bring me to the inbox and then dictate is dictate in the current note and then search and then scan document and this is change profile so I can change it like from dark mode to light mode or change the text or an automation utility something like that and then I even have an extra block that I haven't put something else in there yet but and then of course we have my ultimate ipad mini app setup the best apps for your ipad mini we start with communication iMessage of course the the contacts app facetime apple mail translate and then zoom for lectures and things like that and spark my favorite third party email client it's amazing it has great automation and utility for that then happy cow is my favorite it's like the vegan yelp or people who have dietary restrictions you can go anywhere and find it and they have like grocery store recommendations and all sorts of other stuff it's amazing and then writing and reading we have keynote pages voice stream voice stream is my favorite reading app it can orc your documents so then it can read it out to you so you just scan it in and if you get a thing from your instructor or put your books in there and you can read it and it has different speeds and then drafts is my favorite plain text editor it also has amazing automations which i have on my home screen i have new with voiceover new inbox continue dictating search scan documents and then this one is change pre sets, which is an advanced feature because they have lots of advanced automations and drafts. And then I haven't filled up this last box yet. And then we have GoodNotes, my favorite note-taking app for like right on top of your notes and annotating and note-taking, things like that. Then Quizlet, my favorite flashcard app for the iPad and favorite flashcard app for students. And iBooks are books because it's a stock app and it comes on your iPad and it has excellent spotlight search integration. Then Notes, for Notes, I use Apple Notes for most things. It has amazing spotlight search integration and then numbers which is an excel alternative for all your charts and things like that and then these are exciting these are the photo and video apps these are for mobile creative people and for things like that filmic pro my favorite filming app on the ipad you can film 4k raw or and log footage and lots more and then filmic remotes you can use another device to control your device that you're using to film then photoshop because photoshop is amazing and great for making thumbnails for youtube videos and then adobe illustrator because if you need to illustrate something in vectorized graphics then Adobe Illustrator is the best vectorized graphic app for the iPad and for the iPhone. The Photos app of course and then YouTube Studio because I have YouTube channels and it's easy to change your thumbnails and things like that through that. And Ferrite which is my favorite audio recorder slash podcast recording app for the iPad. It's amazing it has so much utility. You can plug in audio interfaces into it and record into the iPad through the audio interface while monitoring it. And Procreate I'll have a video on my drawing apps that I'll have have linked in the video description but procreate is amazing and it is a one-time purchase so photoshop isn't but photoshop is amazing even with student discount photoshop's expensive and then imovie imovie's okay but the best video editing app on the ipad is LumaFusion. it's probably my favorite video editor of all time i like it better than premiere pro or final cut it's so amazing it's so well optimized but it has so much utility and it's intuitive but it also has those deep core features for advanced video editing on the go or setting up a whole iPad video editing desk set, garage band for making music and things like that. I use my own music in my videos, so I had to make my music. And then the Clips app. And then Shaper 3D is amazing. You can build full 3D CAD models and other things like that. So you can either use a 3D printer or a CAD machine or things like that. So that's amazing if you have a 3D printer or you're gonna, or use a laser cutter so you can cut out things. Then the camera app. Then the voice memos app is nice because it reports to the local device so you can just take quick notes. But okay, now automations and utilities. Things 3 is my favorite 
Over to do list manager on the iPad. It has great automation support and great organization for the iPad and really well suited for people who use GTD or getting things done system by day Allen. It's really helpful for that. And the reminders app, of course, these two work well together. And then the files app, then my favorite SFTP client and FTP client manager and input and output for transferring to file servers or importing from a file server or things like that is FTP manager. It's this icon. There's some other ones that I've tried, but they're not good as this. This is my favorite SFTP app for the iPad. Then Yoink, which is my favorite shelf app for storing all the things that you don't want to lose, but you don't really know where to put. And then shortcuts for automation, because that's what you do as one of the automation tools. Then IFTTT, if then, then that. And then File Hub Bus allows me to connect to the RAV Power and use that to connect to all those things that the RAV Power can do. The link in the video description to videos on that. And then the settings app, then Find My, and then Calendar and App Store, and then the Home app, because I'm a big HomeKit person. I believe that HomeKit is much better than like the Google ones because those aren't very secure. And I like Apple's track record and implementation into the Apple ecosystem. And then the clock and then the Maps app. I actually like Apple Maps better than I like Google Maps, which is a controversial statement. But tell me in the video description, are you an Apple Maps person or Google Maps or some other app? And then if you're a vegan, this is amazing. Is it vegan? This will scan a barcode or you can hold the thing above a package and it'll look at the package and using the camera or an LiDAR sensor. If you have a LiDAR based iPad Pro or iPhone and tell you if it's vegan and also populate any food health and safety warnings that if there's any like recalls or anything like that. So everybody should have it even if you're not vegan. And then Charles Schwab for my investments and things like my stocks. I use Charles Schwab and then the tips app for when new iOS versions come out and things like that. The Measure app, the Magnifier app, and the Apple Store app. I don't really use these very often whatsoever. That's why they're on a second separate page so they don't clutter up my main page of automation and utility tools. So tip, if you don't use it very often, put it on another page. And then have the media consumption apps, which this is what you do when you want to relax or something like that. So I have the podcasting app, the Apple TV app, the Apple Music app, the YouTube app, and the iTunes app. Although the YouTube app I also use for when I premiere videos to interact with you guys in the chat and things like that. So then I have, of course I have Safari because Safari, but then the app library. And so this is what I have for my app library, but I don't really use the app library. But one thing I do use is the swipe down menu up here. I have, of course, the blocks up there, but the more exciting, interesting thing is the focus modes. So I have do not disturb, work, relax, and personal right now, but tell me what focus modes you use in the video description, or if you find them useful or they're completely ridiculous. Okay, then I have the flashlight widget. It's surprisingly useful. It's actually very good. And then plus calendar, photo, Apple TV remote, so I can connect it right to the Apple TV and not have to use the Apple TV remote. And then the AA button brings me to all my text and large and bigger or small things because of the iPad mini's wonky scaling and all those things. And then the accessibility toggle to turn off assistive touch and all those things and assistive hearing. And then I also have a widget that turns it from dark mode to light mode. So light mode. And then this is my home screen. Dark mode. This is my home screen for my iPad mini. Okay. And then of course I have the recording because I'm currently recording. But And then my downstairs stairs. These are the lights in our house and that's the home pod. So you can turn it on and off. And then the rotation lock, which is actually kind of helpful. So if you want to turn it and you are laying in bed and it keeps on rotating, you want to keep it in full screen mode when you're watching Netflix or things like that. That's super helpful. Okay. So tell me in the video description, what's your favorite apps for the iPad mini? Please like, share, and subscribe for more tips, tools, resources, and tutorials for a living on mobile. If you liked this or found it helpful, check out this video next.